What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Monserrat Torre. Join the family. Hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you as long as you promise to always keep it positive and be kind to one another. I actually want to do a series that occurs <laughs> weekly. All the other series that I've come up with so far aren't meant to be done every single week. They're just series that are easy to find within a playlist here on my channel. But this is something that I really do want to sit down and do every Monday because one of the coolest parts of my job is getting to try a bunch of new product. We're essentially our own beauty editors and life has gotten crazy. I think that when all of us first started doing YouTube, it wasn't what it is now. And I feel like back in the day, I used to be able to sit down and play with makeup on the daily. And now I get so much stuff which I am so thankful for, um, but I don't have time to play with it. But if I make it a point to sit down every week and play with it, um, record it, put a video out for you guys, it's beneficial for everyone involved because I get to try new stuff, you guys get to see the new stuff in action, stuff that you've been asking about, and um, hopefully we get a good look by the end of this video because I haven't tried any of this stuff or maybe I've played with it a little bit, maybe worn it once, but for the most part, everything is new and um, I'm just really excited to just sit down, play with makeup, talk to you guys, and talk to you about this product. So, let's get right into it. I am going to start by priming my skin. I want to try combining these two as my skin prep. I'm going to be using this Murad Environmental Shield Essential C Day Moisturizer. I already apply my vitamin C during the day and then add a moisturizer. So this is both of them in one product. And then um, this Ula Hendrickson product is brand new, the Banana Bright Face Primer with vitamin C as well. But this one is an actual primer, whereas this one is more so a skincare item, a moisturizer. If I combine them together, I feel like I might get a nice finish. It's funny because I don't really like fragrance in my skincare unless the skincare item is spectacular and then I'm like, <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on my face anyway. Um, but with the Ula Hendrickson products, they all have a slight scent to them, but it's one that is very spa-like. I really like the fragrance that they use in their products. So now I can go in with this new Dose of Colors foundation. I think it's called Meet Your Hue. At least that's what's on the label or on the cap. And I have shades 117, 118, and 120. I feel like I could pull off the darkest one by itself, actually. We're gonna go in the darkest one, 120. In order to not have to wipe off the primer that I've already put on my face, I'm just gonna start blending this in with my fingertips. I always use my fingers to apply foundation. I feel like it always gives a nice finish. Unless the foundation is like super matte, sometimes those can go on best with just like a beauty blender. But this one has a really nice texture. The texture, I would compare it to almost like a sheer glow from NARS. It has like that nice creamy texture to it. it has a nice coverage, it looks like. It feels really nice on the skin. It's really gliding on. It doesn't feel heavy. So I'm gonna go in with the new Dose of Color sponge that also came out with the foundation. And I'm going to further blend this out. This sponge feels really nice. It's like pretty comparable to Beauty Blender and the Oprah sponge, which to me are the best sponges out there. And it feels nice and dense, like not too squishy. The point is nice and sturdy. I like the shape of it. And this foundation is really nice, like really, really nice. Definitely the kind of foundation that I would gravitate towards. More of that very dewy skin-like finish. Okay, I feel like now you can really see the foundation. I darkened the settings on my camera because before I felt like it was really bright on the center and it was washing everything out. But now you can see it. It has a really nice fresh finish. Really reminds me of Sheer Glow and Kogendo Aqua Foundation combined. Uh, dewy, fresh, light. I would say it's like a medium coverage. I wouldn't say it's like sheer at all. You saw the coverage as I was applying it on this side, but I really, really like it. Me gusta. I also have a lot of concealers at the moment, but I decided to try this Natasha Denona concealer. I will say when I got the PR package, it seems like there's a lack of darker colors. There were a lot of really light colors, but I still want to try it just because Natasha Denona is known for having high quality products. So I just want to give her concealer a try. I kept this peachy one as like a correcting shade in case I ever wanted to brighten. See how it's nice and peachy like that. So I usually do that and then blend it out. And then to highlight, I'm gonna go in with my actual color, which I believe if I want a nice highlight is gonna be this, this color right here, 7Y. 
It's a very fluid concealer, it doesn't feel heavy, but I did let one of my friends pick her shade and take it home the other day and I was swatching it on her and it does dry down matte. For how light it goes on though, I feel like, it doesn't feel like shape tape. I feel like that's always the concealer that I compare new concealers to. It's like full coverage with the consistency of a sheer concealer. It's really interesting. I do notice it oxidizing. I feel like it's getting darker as I let it sit there. So I really don't like that in a concealer. Also, I would blend faster with this concealer because I think once it sets, it doesn't like to move because I can see it kind of settling. The concealer is increasing as much as most concealers crease on my eyes. I don't have wrinkly under eyes. They just crease a lot for whatever reason. I think it's just the way that they fold. I think everything looks good. I could see how this concealer could cause a little bit of texture, not gonna lie. But overall, um, I think it does feel really light for a concealer and it looks really good with this Dose of Colors foundation. And... Um, just to play it fair, I'm going to use a powder that I know always looks good versus trying a new one. At least um, down the side of the face, I'm going to use the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. I'm just going to set the under eyes. Ooh, this sponge, the point on here is so perfect for detail work. Like underneath the eyes is like little corner. Such a good sponge. Okay, now that I've set with powder, I think that the concealer does look a little more textured than some of my other concealers, but it still looks good. And then I wanna try another powder on the rest of my face that's brand new. So let me see what I have. I have this one luminizing one from Too Faced that I feel like I've been scared to use on my face because it looks really luminizing, but let's give it a try on here, why not? This is the Do You Too Faced Translucent Radiant Nude Setting Powder. It looks really shiny like a highlighter, but it's meant to be a setting powder. So this is Translucent Radiant Nude. It does have a bit of a beigey tint to it, unlike the Laura Mercier powder. Give it a try. I'm gonna apply it with this Smith 139 brush everywhere but the center of the face. This is why I need to start using products sooner because I think that this powder gave my skin a really nice finish. Obviously, if you're oily, this is probably not the powder for you, but if you're dry and you find that when you apply a powder, it makes you look drier, this gives like a really nice subtle glow. Can you guys see it? Can you see it? It looks good. Okay, anyway, moving on from the powder. I really wanted to use this Natasha Denona Bronze and Glow Palette, but I feel like the bronzer is gonna be too much for me. I'm gonna give it a try anyway. I'm gonna start using it, and if it looks too orangey, because it's a beautiful palette, the ones up here are cream. Powder Highlight Bronzer. Is that not like the prettiest palette? As soon as I saw this, I was like, yes. But I don't know that bronzer shade. I prefer bronzer colors like this. Let me show you guys side by side what these two look like. Look at that. See how this is more cool toned? So it's great for bronzing and uh, contouring with a powder versus this one. I don't know, let's give it a try. I'm gonna use this Smashbox Buildable Cheek Brush. It applies bronzer really softly, which is why I like it. So let's see what this looks like. I'm nervous. bad. I don't know why it looks so dark. Let me swatch it on my hand. It looks so scary. Right? But it's buildable and actually looks way more cool toned on my arm. But look at that. I think you just have to be really light handed with this and this brush obviously applies it really nicely because it's really light and feathery. It doesn't apply the product really heavy or pack it on so you can really build on the color. I think this is nice. I judged it from the outside. You should never do that until you've actually tried the product. I definitely don't want to use this bronzer on the nose or lower lip because it's so dark. Like now I feel like I look a little too tan. At first I was like, okay, good. Now I'm like, no. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in with my trusted MAC Studio Fix Sculpt and Shape Contour Palette. This is amazing, I love this palette. I feel like I use it daily. So I'm gonna go in with this middle shade. And 
and I'm just gonna grab a really large fluffy brush and sort of blend this all out because it's definitely not a beginner's bronzer like if you're new to bronzer and you used this, I feel like you'd be like, whoa, I don't like bronzer. But it is pretty, and I think that that palette might work for a lot of people just because of all the different uh, powders and creams in here. But I would prefer it to be a little lighter, more of like a contour shade, but it's not bad. I've zoomed you guys on in. You can get a close look at the skin. It looks really good. I just think that this concealer, for me, is a little drying like I think it's making my under eyes look like I have a ton of makeup on and I know it's the concealer because That's the only thing I used differently. I am actually going to fill in my brows. I got some new uh, Tom Ford eyebrow product um, I believe these pencils are new. They are called the brow perfecting pencil and It's actually a fine point like this, which is what I look for in a brow pencil. This is the shade number four espresso it feels nice gripping this and the color is perfect. I like eyebrow pencils that feel a little dry, not in a bad way, just a little drier versus creamy because the brow comes out looking more natural versus a really, really creamy product. When you have thick brows like me, that can go south real quick. It can look like a little fuzzy caterpillar, but this looks really nice. So I'm gonna fill in the other side and then we're gonna jump into the eyes. I got the entire Glossier Play Collection a while back and was dying to use it and literally never got around to using it. So I'm really excited for this. Um, I'm going to be using this, I think they're like a multi-use pencil, Technogel eye pencil. I got inspired by um, Ariana Grande's new music video. She has like this really, really light baby blue eyeshadow on and a winged liner. It almost looks white, that's how light the shadow is. So I'm hoping that this does it for me. I'm also going to be using the... Uh, ColourPop Blue Moon palette. They came out with a series of palettes that are all color coordinated. They have a blue, an orange, like a pink. I'm hoping that this pencil with this color will give me that Ariana Grande look. Let's just go for it. I tried skipping concealer and foundation on my eyelid as well. Anytime I use a pencil like this, I try to not apply anything to my lid to get it true to color. So there's really only concealer on the inner and outer part of the eye. So we're just going to apply this all over the lid like so. And then with a LH304 brush, I'm going to blend this up into the crease. I mean, I think they're meant to be eyeliners, but they look like multi-use to me. At least that's what I'm going to make it. Okay, so now I'm going to use that same brush to apply Moonlight, this color right here, all over the lid. So it's going to kind of set this liner and enhance the color. I kind of wish I would have done the eyes first just because whenever I'm applying a cream to the eye, I always want to make sure I'm not adding foundation or concealer. It makes it a lot harder to get the pencil to be true to color because I feel like it's looking a little heavy on my lid and I can't tell if that's because I had a little bit of concealer or foundation there, but I am getting the color that I wanted. Okay, now that I've packed that on, I'm going to take a larger blending brush, a Smith 232, and just really soften out these edges because the look on Ariana looked so soft. Like this almost looks a little too blue, but it could just be because I'm a little lighter than Ariana. I think she's pretty tan. Okay, I decided to do a winged liner. I had to go off camera for this. It was kind of a disaster. <laughs> Not because of the product. The product is great. It's my skills. You guys know I never do winged liners, so it's a little bit of a task and a half. Um, this liner though is amazing. I think it definitely rivals the Kat Von D Troop liner, I think it's called. Very similar brush. See that? It's not a felt tip, which I think makes it a lot easier to use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a wing on this side and show you guys how easy this product is to use. I really, really like it. And it goes on super black too. As I was doing this liner, I was like, hold up, I gotta put my hair up because I need a little help in this department. Okay, I can't have like a saggy eyelid trying to do the liner. It just still looks a little choppy right there, but I can easily fix that. Um, but the hair up really made a huge difference. Now I feel like my eyeliner looks fierce. All right, looking good. I'm going to pop on some individual lashes and then get into some mascara. I'm going to try this Warrior Princess Mascara from Flower Beauty. It reminds me a lot of the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara, the brush does. See that? I think the mascara looks really, really nice, and I definitely want to give it a try without individual lashes, but it has like the right consistency and the right brush. I like fluffy brushes like this. I like mascaras that are a little thick, but not clumpy or dry, but we'll report back when I use it on my actual lashes. Okay, gonna zoom back out and finish this look. Well, I almost forgot. I also have this new brow gel from Tom Ford. It is very similar to like Gimme Brow and the Hourglass 
fiber brow gel so it has a little bit of color I thought I wanted to use a clear brow gel but I want to give this a try as well so I'm gonna use shade number four espresso this actually feels really nice and light some brow gels that have color when I put them on I'm like oh no <laughs> but this actually is going on really nice and light and it's separating the brow hairs really nicely so it gives you that feathered effect still and I was gonna use a completely different highlighter but I just feel like since I already started using this I should use the other powders in here to really justify if this is worth it versus just using the bronzer. So I'm gonna go in with the cream and then probably a little bit of the powder as well just to see what it looks like on the skin together. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take that same dose of color sponge and I'm gonna pick up the cream on the rounded end and apply that to the skin. I'm not a huge fan of layering cream and powder highlights together. This highlight is really, really pretty. And it's going on really nicely. But I don't think the bronzer was the best. We're gonna try the powder in just a second, the powder highlight, and then I wouldn't use this one. I'm just gonna apply the powder highlight on the bridge of the nose and Cupid's bow instead of trying to layer this over this pretty highlight because I really love the way this is looking. So let's just add this here. Cupid's bow and a bit of the chin. And then for blush, Bare Minerals, I already like their original uh, blushes that look like this, but these are the Bounce and Blur. So I think these have a little more shimmer than the other ones. I think the other ones were completely matte. And this color is just so perfect. It's called Blurred Buff. So it's great when you have a really colorful look like this because it's such a nice neutral blush. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this onto the cheeks with that other end of my hourglass brush. I went ahead and outlined my lips with this ColourPop Lippy Pencil in BFF. And I'm going to try and use this So Juicy Plumping Gloss. I haven't tried this yet. Um, when I first saw these, I'm like, eh, they look kind of cheap. But this color kind of caught my eye because it's like my lip but better. So let's just give it a try. See if it gives us what we're going for. Yes! That's exactly what I was going for. And one more thing before I conclude this video, I wanted to try this on camera. <laughs> this Soul Shimmering Dry Oil. I'm sure this is, or I'm pretty positive, it's like another um, sister company to ColourPop where it's made from the same lab. But I've seen a lot of people using it and it looks so pretty. It comes in two shades. This is the more golden one and the other color <laughs> is a more pearlescent one. I feel like this one's perfect for summer. So I thought I would just add it to my shoulders. Ooh, Boomer, what are you doing? I'm just gonna add it here. Ooh. It's nice when you're by the beach or the pool or just for like when you want the shine and the gloss to show through on a photo. But if I'm wearing like something nice, I feel like this oil would get everywhere. But it is beautiful, that's, that's a fact. Ooh, the lips are feeling a little tingly from that gloss was not expecting that and I kind of like it still have so much new stuff to try you guys I this is barely like scratching the surface like if you could see behind me the pile of stuff it is out of control I hope you guys enjoyed this video and kind of just creating a look from scratch from start to finish using all new product I think if I do this weekly we can kind of get to know all these new products and what's good what's not good and then if it's good you'll obviously see me use it more in my other tutorials so I hope you guys enjoyed it I'm hoping to have these videos up every Monday moving forward this one I'm gonna stick to like try really hard to stick to <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did if you like the concept give it a thumbs up share it subscribe hit that notification bell and I will see you in my next video bye guys Mwah.